Welcome to Developer TV. I'm your host, Shantanu Agarwal. Today we'll go over how to use multiple Watson services. With me today is Ashma Rora. Hi. Hey. She's a software engineer with Watson Conversation. Today we're going to talk about how to connect Tone Analyzer with Cloud Functions, formerly known as OpenWhisk. So most of our viewers are probably familiar with Watson Conversation, but they may not be familiar with Tone Analyzer, one of the services that we're going to be connecting with Conversation today. Could you tell us more about Tone Analyzer? Sure. So Tone Analyzer is one of Watson's signal services that identifies a variety of tones, including emotions, social propensities, and language styles. And so the way that we're going to connect conversation to tone is something called Cloud Functions, what was formerly known as OpenWhisk. Could you tell us more about Cloud Functions? Sure. So Cloud Functions is a serverless architecture that runs code in response to events or direct invocations. OK. So what is a serverless architecture, and how does Cloud Functions work? So Cloud Functions accelerates development as a set of small, distinct, and independent actions. Developers can focus on writing application logic and creating actions that are executed on demand. So it allows teams to rapidly work on different pieces of code simultaneously, keeping the overall focus on creating user experiences that customers really want. Cool. So this is a really great way of reducing stress for developers when they're trying to put conversation and tone or conversation and other services together. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk more about Tone. So what are some of the use cases that someone might want to use conversation with Tone Analyzer? Yeah, so one of the more common use cases is around customer service. So for example, if a bot is interacting with a customer, Tone Analyzer is good for detecting a person's tone. It could be angry, sad, happy, and so on. Okay. With customer service, it's really important for a company or a brand to detect how the customer is feeling and then respond accordingly. OK, so how are you feeling right now? Superb. OK, so tell us how. I, with Watson Conversation and Tone, or anyone of our audience can start doing this today. Yeah, sure. This is one simple sequence diagram which shows what's happening uh, at the back end. So imagine if you're a developer and you already have an existing app. It could be a Node app running on Express, and it's already talking to Watson Conversation. You see two pieces on the left-hand side, the app itself with Conversation, and then the two additional features that we are talking about, which is Cloud Functions and Tone Analyzer. And these are the pieces on the right-hand side. So if you already have the left-hand side set up, it's really easy to add the right-hand side. All you really need to do is add callouts to cloud function actions from inside your conversation tooling itself. And these actions know that they need to make the call to the tone analyzer service itself. And the way to invoke these actions is by including their name along with a bunch of parameters. And these parameters could be the user text or some other information you want to pass to the action. And this is used by the Tone Analyzer service itself to make a decision on the user's tone. Got it. So for those of us who don't have a Cloud Functions account, how do we get one? It's really easy. So if you already have a Bluemix account, mm -hmm. then all you really need to do is go to the Bluemix catalog and then sign up for Cloud Functions. How can I see this now live? Is there a sample app you can show me? Yes. So we have a short demo that shows what the end user experience looks like. And then we can dive deeper into the details. Okay. So this is a sample application which is using the Conversation Simple app that some of you might already have seen in previous demos. In this particular use case, there's a bot um, which is built using Watson Conversation. And this bot is set up on a Node Express app. Um, so it's exactly the same architecture that we saw in the previous slide. Okay. So imagine I am the user and there's a bot that's talking to me, asking me about my recent purchase that I just did on their website. Okay. So it's asking me what did I purchase? Um, let's say I just bought a laptop. Okay. Now it's going to ask me about how I felt about the overall shopping experience. Okay. So let's say I really enjoyed it and things went smoothly. I hope it did. And now as you can see that the conversation service is responding back in a tone aware fashion. Because it. it knows that I had a great shopping experience. Now, uh, some of you might be already familiar with the JSON exchange format that takes place with the conversation service. But essentially, what's happening on the right hand side is for every incoming utterance from the user, intents and entities are identified. Right. So, in this particular utterance, whatever the user said, the intent identified was yes. Okay. And there were no entities in the previous input. Um, and there's an output text that we just see on the left-hand side, which is also present on the right-hand side. Okay. It has a bunch of other information as well, which is used by the dialogue, um, uh, by the dialogue runtime yep. to make the appropriate response. Okay. Now let's uh, scroll over to the bottom, where you'll see one additional field here. It's called my result. And this result is whatever is coming back from Cloud Functions. 
And this variable it comprises of the tone that we got back from the tone analyzer service itself. And as you can see, um, the tone was satisfied. What the dialog runtime does is it uses this value to condition its response that it sends back to the user. Interesting. So what are the different options that it could return back? So there are multiple options. It could be excited, it could be sad, and so on. And you do have access to tone analyzer docs, and yep. they uh, really nicely list out all the different tone varieties that are available. Got it. Perfect. This is a great app, but how do I actually do it in my tooling? So it's really easy. Um, let's say you already have the bot set up. Okay. Uh, all you really need to do is uh, add a new callout inside your dialog node itself. Okay. So at this point inside my dialog tree, I already have uh, received the user's feedback. And now what I need to do is create a dialog node. Uh, let's expand this node to see what it looks like. And now I'm going to open up the expanded JSON editor so we can look at the response properly. Uh, the output object is something that most of you might have seen in previous videos. Um, it comprises of the text that the, that the bot responds with. But something new that we've added now is an actions field. And this is the field which comprises of the name and parameter listing along with the response that you would get when you make an actual callout to a cloud function's action. So in this particular demo, uh, as you can see, we were calling out to a tone action that was built inside cloud functions. Uh, so I'm supplying the name of the action itself and a bunch of parameters. So in this particular example, all we really need is the user's input. That's right. the feedback. Um, as you can see, that's the input text that I received right prior to this dialog node itself. Okay. Um, and it's also important for the dialog runtime to get access to the username and password of the user's cloud functions account. So once you do get uh, the response back, how do you really use it inside dialog? Uh, the way to do that is by setting a context variable. Okay. Uh, result variable is the name of the field that contains the response you get back from the action. Okay. And it can be stored in any variable that you want, and it lives throughout the context of your dialogue. And it can, this is then what's used to condition the response inside the dialogue. Great. So can you show me that? Yes. So once we get my result, um, it comprises of the tone variable. Uh, and now I'm conditioning on the variable's value. So let's expand this dialog node and see what it looks like. So this is the condition that uh, I'm using in order to get uh, the tone. So if the tone is equal to satisfied, yep. then you respond in a nice manner, um, letting the user know that you understood that he was satisfied with the end user experience. Huh, and this looks very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is what the dialog um, is at the back end. Uh, and it's linked to the demo that we just saw. Excellent. Thanks so much for showing us that. You're welcome. And how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling satisfied. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks so much, Ashma, for coming out. If you're interested in trying this out yourself, check out the links in the description below. And if you don't have a Bluemix account, please sign up today. Until next time, we'll see you here at Developer TV. Goodbye, everybody.